Moving to our next topic are the famous engineers who molded the surface of the earth. To know the historical perspective on structural engineering, you will briefly go through the evolution of structural system from the trial and error designs used by ancient Egyptians and Greeks to the highly sophisticated configurations used today. The first in our list are the Egyptians. Egyptian builders used quarried stones from Nile River to construct temples and pyramids. Due to the weak tensile strength of stones, a brittle material because of multitude of cracks and voids, beam spans in temples had to be short to prevent it from bending failures. Post and lintel system has massive stone beams balanced on relatively thick stone columns to support vertical loads, where buildings had to be relatively low. One famous Egyptian builder is Imhotep. Imhotep is the first structural engineer in history. Imhotep is one of the only two commoners to be worshipped. He built the step pyramid of Sakra about 3000 BC, which yielded to great influence in ancient Egypt. Second on our list are the Greeks. Greeks interest themselves more on the aesthetic appearance of stone columns. Still, same type of construction, post and lintel, was used in creating the famous Greek temple Parthenon. In 400 BC, Parthenon was built and considered as the most elegant temple out of stone construction of all time. Even at present times, where post and lintel construction was replaced by steel and reinforced concrete frames, Architects and engineers continued to impose the facade of the classical Greek temple of public buildings. One of the famous Greek builder is Ictinos, who created the famous Parthenon. He also created the Temple of Mysteries at Eleusis and the Temple of Apollo Epicurus at Basse. Next on the list are the gifted builders, the Romans. Arcs were introduced by Roman engineers. These are often employing in a multiple tiers in coliseums, aqueducts, and bridges. The arc's curved shape permitted longer clear spans from rectangular lines from masonry post and lintel construction. The stability of masonry arc requires that its entire cross-section be stressed in compression under all combinations of load and the abutments or end walls have sufficient strength to absorb the large diagonal thrust at the base of the arc. Aside from arcs, the Roman engineers developed a method of enclosing interior space by a masonry dome as seen in the Pantheon in Rome, which is still standing today. One of the famous Roman engineers is Apollodrus of Damascus. During the time of Roman Emperor Trajan, Apollodorus of Damascus is credited with having designed most of the imperial buildings constructed during his reign, including baths, a forum, a bridge over the Danube, and the famous Trajan's Column. The column, which was built in the Roman Doric Order and measures 125 feet, was the first triumphal monument of its kind. Apollodorus is also often credited as, as the designer of the Pantheon, and he is known to have written several technical treaties, none of which survive. Moving into the master builders of Europe in the mid-18th century, the structural engineering is now transitioning from stones to cast iron. The introduction of cast iron gave birth in the new building designs buildings with shallow but strong beams, and columns with compact cross-sections, allowing the design of lighter structures with longer open spans and larger window areas were made possible because of the use of cast iron. Massive bearing walls in masonry construction are no longer needed. Later on, 
which deals with high tensile and compressive strengths evolve the construction industry to taller structures and eventually to skyscrapers of today. Gustave Eiffel is a famous French engineer. From our early discussion, also constructed many long span steel bridges in addition to his innovative Eiffel Tower, which gained a worldwide known landmark for Paris. With the steel industry booming in this era, the combination of steel reinforcement and concrete enabled the American engineers to convert the brittle stone like material on reinforced concrete into a tough, ductile structural numbers. Concrete having a strength to withstand compression but not tension was combined with steel reinforcement which can withstand tensile force, reinforced concrete, and can be created in different shapes from its temporary forms by pouring concrete and building a monolithic reinforced concrete structure. Monolithic meaning one continuous unit. So, Hardy Cross. In 1920s, Hardy Cross introduced moment distribution, where engineers acquired a relatively simple technique in analyzing continuous structures. As they got familiarized with moment distribution, they were able to analyze indeterminate frames. And by that, the use of reinforced concrete as building material increased rapidly. The introduction of welding was made known during the late 19th century. It was primarily used in joining the steel members. It eliminated the use of heavy plates and angles, which requires early riveting methods. But engineers today rely on technological advancements. Structures made in 1950s took team of engineers months to analyze. But now, with a few clicks and simulations, you can analyze structures accurately in minutes by one engineer using a computer. Structural analysis softwares are available and handy in this era, so there's nothing to worry about. Now, the future of structural engineer is in you. Are you ready to shape the world? But before you shape the world, let's discuss structural analysis. Structural analysis is an integral part of structural engineering projects. It is the analysis of a given structure subjected to specific loads and have to analyze the structure's response to these given loads. To explain further, you have heard about the story of the three little pigs. The lesson of the story was relevant to structural engineering. While the wolf was blowing the house down, the house reacted to the impact given by the wolf. In structural analysis, the wolf is the threat. The brick house is the structure. After blowing the house down, the house reacted, and that reaction is the response of the house. In a forward analysis, the threat is our input, and the response is our output. Structures cannot be analyzed. Instead, they can be load tested. We use structural models in analyzing structures as to what response or the output will the structure experience in a given loading or the input. Our output here are loads, vibrations, settlement, thermal changes, and the like. While our response or the internal stresses, strains, displacements, stress resultants, and support reactions. Mm -hmm.